So my name is Richard Samworth. I'm Professor of Statistical Science here. And I'm also, uh, as of the 1st of October, the, the Director of the Statistical Laboratory. Can you tell us about the Statistical Laboratory and the work that, you, that everyone does there? Yeah, so, so there are four main areas that we cover here. There's statistics, probability, mathematical finance and operations research. Um, so there's actually quite a wide diversity of, of uh, topics that people work on, but we're, we're all sort of motivated in some way to try to understand random phenomena. In statistics, I would say a lot of our work is motivated by the modern phenomenon of big data. This is the, the fact that it's so much easier to collect and store data on, on previously unimaginable scales. And what this means is that a lot of algorithms that we know well and that work well in small dimensional problems where you have relatively small numbers of data points uh, can either not be used at all or might perform very badly uh, when you're in this new setting. So there's a great uh, opportunity because we can try to answer questions that have previously been completely out of reach, but there are also great challenges because we need new statistical algorithms and we need justification for those algorithms. In probability, uh, many of the researchers are motivated by questions to do with random walks or, or, or random surfaces or random shapes in general. Uh, so there are, um, if you can imagine um, something like that, that if you were follow, to follow a stock price over time, that, that might represent a sort of random walk. And so there's a great interplay between uh, the randomness, the probability side, and the geometry and the shapes that the, these uh, uh, processes um, form and so people try to classify uh, th these different processes into, into uh, different classes. And could you tell us about the sort of broader social and economic impacts of statistics? Uh, the societal impact of, of statistics is enormous. It gives us a basis for making uh, evidence-based decisions. So uh, should we put up interest rates or what should we do about climate change or does the Higgs boson exist? These, these are all questions that we can try to address by collecting appropriate data and then by careful statistical analysis. Um, the economic impact is also very big indeed. Uh, if you imagine that uh, the sort of statistical algorithms that underpin driverless car technologies um, or uh, how we might try to improve London's transport network by collecting hoisted car data and these sorts of things. There's huge economic potential from uh, the use of, of appropriate statistical methods. And you set up um, a number of years ago, you set up the Stats Clinic here. Um, could you tell us about that and how that works? Yes, so this is something I set up about eight years ago now. It means that uh, once a fortnight, anyone in the university can come and get help with their statistical problems, either from me or from one of my postdocs or, or my students or, or uh, some of the other helpers that we have around the Stats Lab. Um, it's been, been very insightful for, for me. It's, um, um, you would expect that you get a lot of people from the biological sciences, and we certainly do, but we also get uh, people from all sorts of different domains that you wouldn't necessarily imagine, like linguists or historians or uh, musicologists. And the variety of the, the questions that they come with is very stimulating. Another huge benefit I, I've found is it's a great way for me of, of training my PhD students and postdocs. It takes real skill to try to distill the essence of someone's problem down to, uh, um, to, to in a way that you can um, understand and then try to propose a, a solution. And the other thing that, that is really important is the ability then to communicate that, that uh, advice in a way that's understandable to the practitioner you're speaking to. And that might actually mean recommending a rather different uh, method than, uh, depending on the ability level of the person you're speaking to. And what are the sort of future directions for the Stats Lab here in Cambridge? That's a very good question. It's very difficult to predict what, what are going to be hot research topics uh, in the long term future. Um, this year we're, we're trying to hire um, someone with expertise in, in operations research, uh, a, a new professor, the Churchill Professor for the Mathematics of Operational Research. Um, so this is, uh, uh, optimization is, is crucial for a lot of modern statistical algorithms. Many uh, algorithms are defined as the solution to particular optimization problems. And uh, in modern algorithms, th these often in involve many different variables and are highly complex. So we're looking to hire someone with expertise in that area. 
And then I think um, statistics will be another big growth area over the coming years, or more broadly, data science, because the, 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 um, the demand from applications is just so great at, at the moment, and I don't see that uh, diminishing. And you were awarded the Adams Prize earlier this year, um, jointly with Professor Graham Cormode from the University of Warwick, um, for statistical analysis of big data. Can you tell us about what that award recognised, and maybe some examples of the kind of work you did? Yes, so it wasn't for one particular piece of work, um, uh, but it was for, for a sort of body of work. But um, let me give you a, a couple of examples. Uh, something I, I've I worked on a few years ago now is a, is a variable selection problem. This is a problem where you have uh, many, many variables that you may initially want to uh, collect data on and, and, and uh, try and ascertain whether you need them in your model or not. Uh, for, for example, in, in genetics um, and microarray experiments, we might be interested in measuring the gene expression levels of many thousands of different genes, typically with only a relatively small number of replications of the experiment. And we want to know which genes are relevant for a particular disease uh, under study. And there's been a huge amount of work done over the last 15 or 20 years on this problem of, of variable selection. Many, many different methods proposed uh, that, that work under uh, various different data generating mechanisms. Um, so in collaboration with my former PhD student, Radhan Shah, um, we proposed a way of trying to improve the performance of an existing method. And it's a very simple idea. Just instead of applying the method once to an entire data set to select which variables you think are important, you apply it many, many different times to half of the observations at a time. When you randomly choose half of the observations and you keep noting which variables would be selected if, if those were, that was your full data set. And then eventually you choose the variables that keep cropping up again and again on, on each of the subsamples. Not necessarily every time, but at least a, a certain proportion of the time. And uh, what's rather nice about this method is you, it's a very general method. You can use it in conjunction with any original base procedure and with any um, underlying data generating mechanism. And so you can then prove theorems about um, the false selection rate um, that allow you to have control of, of the types of error that you might make in a variable selection problem. Another problem that I've worked on recently is what I call a high dimensional classification problem. So a classification problem is the task of trying to assign an object to one of two or more classes based on the sample of tra labeled training data. So if you imagine an email filter, it might have a, a sample of genuine messages and a sample of, of spam messages, and then the task would be to come up with a rule that could assign a future message to one or other of the classes. If you imagine a doctor trying to diagnose diabetes or another disease, it's the same sort of problem from a statistical point of view. And uh, the, the, I use the adjective high dimensional because these days we, we're typically collecting information on many, many different observations that might be relevant for uh, the class to which we should assign an object. So uh, the idea here is that we might want to project this high dimensional random vector into a low dimensional space and do this many, many times and run um, a well-known classifier in, in, in this low dimensional space and then sort of carefully aggregate the results that you might get by applying this method uh, many times in these low dimensional spaces to come up with a final solution. 